Now, with uh, obviously everything going on in the world at the moment, you know, we're in 2021 currently, got the pandemic, a lot of people have been working from home, you've been stuck indoors. Um, lots of people have talked about, you know, the mental health strain of being stuck in, in you know, indoors with, with not a great deal to, to do, really, because everything's shut outside. And, uh, and when you do go outside, you know, some people have a real fear and anxiety of, you know, coming in contact with other people again and things. So this obviously gets amplified when you when you put it into prison situation. Now, obviously, a lot of people will be in a single cell, so you won't have to cope with a you know another another cellmate. Um, but a lot of prisons, you know, they're all double cells, and uh, and occasionally in some prisons you get dorms as well, so you could have you know twenty thirty people um, in a cell. So the spread of COVID and the effect COVID has had on prisons has been quite quite huge. Now I've just been doing obviously I haven't been to prison in over twelve years now. Um so I'm just having a look online to see how it's uh, affected things and, and tried to grab a few resources. So um just reading from a, a report here, um we got Her Majesty's Chief Inspector of Prisons has warned uh, lockdown has had a heavy cost on prisoners with conditions in jails being the worst in modern times. Her report has uh, has warned. Since the end of March twenty twenty most prisoners have spent, most prisoners have spent over ninety percent of their t- of their day behind cell doors. The spread of covid nineteen has been controlled in prisons by a restricted daily regime, but there's been a heavy cost as conditions are the worst in modern times. Her Majesty's chief inspector of prisons has warned now obviously you, you know your freedom and movements are, are pretty restricted in prison anyway you know you're you're kind of limited to your wing most of the time um you might go off to a workshop which is you know, it takes a, it's a five minute walk, you know, to get there. So you're not going far anyway. Um, the workshop is basically a shed within the prison, you know, where you go and do your stuff. Now, normally in that workshop, there could be anything between sort of 10, 20, 30 people. Um, the civilian staff coming in as well to uh, to obviously run the co- the carpentry course or the, you know, the bricklaying course or the, you know, the plumbing course they may be doing. So all these civilian staff are now sat at home furloughed. You know they're not being uh, they're not being brought in. Um, I don't know some prison obviously has people getting sick and self isolating. You know vulnerable family members at home and things. The prison staff is going to be decimated. Um, whenever these sort of things happened in uh, you know there was there was occasion when we'd have you know twenty three hour bang up in in different times in prison. Um, in ex uh, you know you can be banged up with a with a cellmate you don't really know for for long periods of time. Um, just because of the regime, the way they have it there, there's no evening association. So as soon as everything finishes at sort of four or five o'clock, that's it. You're locked up for for however long it is. And uh, and on the days when they've got no staff, like I say, you know, you could be locked up for a, for long periods of time in hot conditions um, with a guy you don't really know, um, with your bed being feet away from the toilet, with with very little screening. Uh, so you know, we've done videos before about ex uh, prison and and how sh- how bad it is there. But um, yeah, it's uh, with with COVID conditions as well. It's going to be getting a lot worse. It says in this uh, report again, uh, many prisoners have been locked in their cells on average uh, for twenty two and a half hours a day, um, which is uh, which is far more than the ten hours a day which is recommended. Um, the number of prisoners placed on suicide watch during the first half of twenty twenty is uh, is ninety percent of the figure of the whole of two thousand and ten. Uh, so yeah, I mean, what we're halfway through the year. Uh, oh no, this was last year. Sorry. So you know, in the first half of last year, um, it was it was you know, twenty twenty was basically looking like it was going to be double the figures for for a normal year. Um, now that's a, a big thing, obviously. You know, the the lack of visits, the lack of meaningful activity, the lack of even just getting out of your cell and and being able to associate with other prisoners because. All of these restrictions, you know, you're not going to be able to gather in crowds. Association is basically just, you know, one big crowd. You know, you've got people showering together. You've got people playing pool in close proximity. You know, you've got groups of people talking all together and things. Um, all of those all of those situations are going to be cut out with these COVID restrictions. You know, even just the, the, you know, the way of feeding people is going to be difficult. A lot of the civilian staff who run the courses, um, the offending behaviour courses... The therapy courses, you know, there's still drug addicts going into prison. Um, there's now no therapy for them. You know, if they've been going in on a three-month sentence or a six-month sentence, there's been no support for anybody um, like that going in, in and out of prison. 
um, you've got people giving birth, you know, there's going to be very little support and help for them um, in prison. I'll do I'll do a video one day about women's uh, prisons and um, and uh, the differences between men and women's prisons and and also uh, the prisons set up for young mums as well, um, how they're sort of built to look a bit like a housing estate and uh, and stuff like that. But um, anyway, we're 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 wandering far from the topic. So um, <clears throat> uh, prisoners were chronically bored and exhausted um, by spending hours locked in their cells, said Mr. Taylor. Uh, they described being drained, depleted, lacking in any purpose and sometimes resigned to their situation and compared themselves to caged animals. Um, I've heard this comparison before. One of my one of my uh, friends said that he felt like a dog in one of those uh, um, RSPCA places. You know, when when you as you walk along, they kind of jump up and start, you know, uh, looking out the cage. Um, every time he heard the keys, every time my, son, my, uh, my friend used to hear the keys uh, walking along the landing, he would look up to see if they were coming to him to, you know, unlock his cell. And uh, he said he found himself quite a lot, you know, just jumping up whenever he heard someone walking along just to come and see if it was his cell that they were coming to. And, um, yeah, that, that comparison is very real when you're in those uh, in those boxes for long periods of time. Uh, prisoners lacked sufficient day-to-day -day interaction and support from other prisoners, staff and family and friends. However, the introduction of free video calling and the continuation of installing in-cell phones... In-cell phones? Um, was valued by inmates. So yeah, that's something that's been introduced since obviously I've left and uh, we never had video calls. Um, it wasn't really a thing. Uh, but in cell phones, um, there is no, you know, there is no, there's no reason not to, to put a phone in the cell. Um, obviously, you know, growing in technology, you know, a lot of people think why should, you know, prisoners have access to a phone or something like that. But, um, you know, Prisoners are already being punished by being in prison. Um, how much you take away from them once they're in there is, uh, you know, is is on us really, is on society. Uh, you, I would argue that prisons are fairly soft as they are. Um, like I say, I'm an advocate for having prisons on uh, on army camps, basically. But uh, yeah, I think that uh, family ties, and, and I would have pretty much given anything for for access to a phone maybe in the evening so I could phone my um, my loved ones when they were home and not doing anything rather than having to sometimes continually call them at work and, and you know, make their home life stressful. So yeah, that's I can see why that would be a good thing. And obviously video calling, if you can afford to do it, then uh, that would be great for so obviously seeing kids and, and family members and things. But um, yeah, just again, this whole lack of being able to have visits and, and any kind of uh, family contact in a normal way, however you call that in prison, must be absolutely uh, detrimental for people. Uh, Prisons Minister Lucy Fraser said the action taken had significantly limited the spread of the virus, adding, we know these necessary measures have come at a cost, so we continue to support prisoners with their well-being and rehabilitation through vital family contact, education, work and exercise. I will consider the report's findings carefully. Now, obviously talking to any MP, you're just going to get bullshit. All right, so if we just break down what they said there, we know the necessary measures have come at a cost. Exactly. They know that uh, protecting the staff and, and stopping the virus from spreading is, is going to hurt people in prison, but no one cares. Um, so we continue to support prisoners with their well-being and rehabilitation through family... Now, this is just your, your normal strap line um, for prisoners. Through vital family contact, education, work and exercise. Now, bearing in mind... Um, there is no family contact because there's no visits. There's no education because they're stuck in a cell all day. There's no work or exercise because they're stuck in a cell all day. Um, so she's just absolutely talking garbage. Um, typical MP bullshit, you know. But um, the thing with the phones is good. And the rest of it is just, you know, they've just basically locked the doors and uh, told everyone to get on with it. And I would hate to be a prison officer in these times, uh, especially going through the summer last year. <clears throat> you know, 2020 summer was absolutely blinding. You know, had really hot times. Uh, so being stuck in your cell in that kind of time when there's no wind flow, because uh, you've got to remember, you obviously your cell door is shut, and um, your, your cell window may only be very, you know, slight. Sometimes in some of the prisons I've been to, it's just been a vent in the window rather than the window actually opening up. So you get no through breeze. Um, so the, the temperature can really get quite warm in the in the cell in the cell if you don't uh, have the door open, and and with no no doors being open 
it, it's going to be uh, it's going to get warm in there. Um, they've been doing these distraction packs for prisoners. I've noticed uh, it, it's not all prisons, uh, but they've basically just got you know some books in there, some puzzles, uh, stress balls, this sort of thing. Um, it's quite a good idea, but again, you know you're only going to distract them for that one time when you give them the bag. Uh, you know, it's these prisoners would have basically been locked up for quite a lot of the time for the last 18 months now um, you know a stress ball can only go so far uh, yeah so I don't know how you know how good these distraction packs will be on a, on a long term basis um, it's easy for me to sit here and kind of criticise everything I don't I don't know what you know what the um, what the solution would be myself you know prison's one of those one of those places where you know everyone just kind of has the attitude of if you don't want to have to deal with COVID in prison, don't go to prison. Uh, but, you know, the reality of the situation is these are still human beings. Um, and uh, if you keep them locked up 23 hours a day for 18 months, you're going to get some severely fucked up people coming out of uh, of prison. And like I say, you're not getting the drugs courses, you're not getting the rehabilitation, you're not getting any of that kind of offending behaviour work. So you're just releasing people who have just been locked in a box for the last God knows how long. And uh, and then kick him back out into society that's already locked up. So I really don't know how how good that's going to be for reoffending as well. So the only ever time I got long periods of being locked away like this, um, <clears throat> there was a couple of occasions. We had a prison officer strike back in kind of I think it was about two thousand six, two thousand seven. I remember being locked up in Exeter and all the staff turned out and they went they went outside of the prison and sat on the wall and things. Um, it helped that it was in August and it was nice and sunny, you know. I, <laughs> I, I doubt that had too much, uh, you know, too much uh, benefit to them, but it was, it was nice for them sitting out in the sun, I bet. But um, yeah, so we were locked up, didn't get out all day. Um, they brought food to the door, you know, sandwiches and stuff. You didn't, you didn't get out. And... Uh, yeah, it was just a bit of fun for us because it was a prison officer strike. So uh, you know, we were just yelling through the door, scab, at all the staff that were you know were still working and stuff, <laughs> just having a bit of fun with them because you know it was like a, a non-school uniform day in school. Everything was a kind of a bit topsy turvy. Um, so uh, yeah, it was it was good to just uh, give them a little bit of grief, knowing that you know it was an unusual situation and and tomorrow it'd be back to normal. And when I was in Portland, uh, when I first went to Portland, within the first few days there was a riot on another wing. Um, so the whole prison got put into lockdown for about four weeks, which just basically meant that nobody was out of the cells for for more than a few minutes. Um, when they when they fed us, we only went out at sort of ten at a time, and the same with kind of washing out and things because we had you know we had piss pots at the time still, so we were you know we had to go and clean out the buckets and uh, and then have a shave and everything in a in a communal sink on the on the landing. So uh, yeah, that was that was I had, you know I had four weeks of of twenty three hour day lock up with no exercise and only just being let out for food you know a handful at a time so it was it was very difficult spending that amount of time um i i found it really difficult um i remember losing my mind a little just because we had no radio i, I at that point i had no radio in my cell um i had no tv I, I didn't even have a cellmate to kind of talk to or anything so it'd just be me my own imagination um writing letters and and then um reading books and that would be my that would be my whole escape and I, I was reading at that point three books a week um just to kind of get through the you know get through the boredom and the monotony of uh of all that time but that was only that was only a four week period now obviously a lot of these prisoners again now you've got tvs and radios in your cell um i was poor at that point so <laughs> i didn't i didn't have a radio i couldn't afford to keep you know to, to pay for the batteries every week because um, we didn't have any power in the cell so we had to pay for batteries and stuff so at that point I was only on my £7 prison wages so I couldn't even afford to save up uh, for the £10 radio which was the cheapest one um, so yeah uh, it was very difficult and I, I don't know how the guys are coping in there at the moment um, but uh, yeah I know that some of you listening now have got family members and friends in prison and uh, I'd love in the comments if you could share just some of the experiences you found and heard of what's what's happening in there right now and and what uh, what it's what it's like and uh, yeah I'm just glad I'm not there anyway again thank you very much for listening and um, we'll keep putting these videos out as long as you keep listening to them 
So, um, yeah, thank you very much. Like, subscribe, do all that other YouTube stuff. Thank you very much. Cheers.